Konnichiwa, namaste, hello everyone. So thank you for joining us uh, today for this exciting webinar about study and have a career in Japan, session 11. My name is Sakshi Roy and um, I am the assistant manager here with the University of Tokyo in your office and I'll be facilitating today's webinar. Uh, with us, I have been joined by uh, Ms. Kushi Javeri, who is a sub-facilitator of this webinar. And we are very happy to have you all aboard here. We are going to start out uh, with a brief introduction about study and have a career in Japan project. So um, our office is a part of Study in Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia by MEXT. And our aim is to promote studying in Japan in order to attract the excellent student to higher education and research in Japan on behalf of all of the Japanese universities through collaboration and networking between overseas regional offices. So uh, being a part of Global 30 project, we provide comprehensive information on Japanese universities. We um, organize education fairs, uh, seminars and uh, webinars throughout India. And we also committees, uh, manage committees for University of Tokyo coordinator for study in Japan. So um, today is 11th day of this webinar series and is sponsored by MEX, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology in Japan. Through all these sessions, our mission is to introduce the world best Japanese universities to you and to assist you to study and have a career in Japan. So uh, without further ado, let me share uh, with you our agenda for today. So I hope everyone can see my screen. So today's webinar is scheduled for two hours. And first, uh, we are going to see presentation by uh, Kichiro Shiyoya-san, who is a uh, student at the University of Tokyo. And then by Ms. Kushi Chaveri, she, uh, she graduated from the Kyo University in Japan. And then uh, followed by presentation by top class professors of three Japanese university, the University of Tokyo, Yokohama National University, and Kyushu University. So uh, without further delay, let's dive into the webinar. And I would like to invite uh, Shioya-san to please uh, present about global unit courses at the University of Tokyo. OK, um, I will share my screen. OK. And can you see? It's Yes, I can see your okay. screen. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Kichiro Shoya. I'm a senior student in University of Tokyo studying urban engineering. Today, I will talk about UTOKYO GUC program. First, what is UTOKYO GUC? It stands for uh, Global Unit Courses. It provides a great opportunity for students all over the world. It offers a lot of both in-person online courses with cutting-edge contents by professors at University, University of Tokyo. And these are examples of courses. They have not only natural science, but also social science, human science, AI for understanding human intelligence, science of light, sustainable urban management, early language acquisition, and dilemma of de uh, development in Asia, uh, contemporary Japanese politics, and so on. They have many pro uh, contents. Uh, this is a um, picture of how the courses are like. They have sometimes a lecture style courses. They have um, field work style. They are very interactive. Uh, this is general information. This, these courses are for um, full-time university students outside Japan. Both undergraduate student and um, graduate student can join. Uh, schedule is like this, but this is for this year. Uh, they have three terms. Each term has one week or two weeks. And uh, fees are like this. Application fee is almost 2,500 rupee. And the in-person format costs itself costs 8, uh, 83,400 rupee per one unit. Also, they have some discount. Actually, it looks a little bit expensive, but Actually, it's 
much cheaper than other universities' courses in other countries. For accommodation, no campus housing is available, but GUC, student, GUC staff can uh, help students find accommodation. Uh, also, they have some interaction with Japanese students. You Tokyo students will support participants and want to interact and talk with them as a student ambassador. Actually, recently I joined GUC program as a student ambassador. It was very fun for me. Also, they have some events. During the term, we have some events, orientation, campus tour, mixer, mixer is lunchtime event. Also, uh, they had Tokyo tour. They visited some Tokyo tourist, uh, tourist places. And next, uh, let me introduce some participants' voice. They had many positive comments about um, many, uh, for example, professors very nice and contents are very timely and interesting. Also, they said uh, they made many friends from other countries, they exchanged many opinions and experience. And then um, finally, let me introduce a student from India. He joined um, this year and he joined some robotics, AI, Japanese language, and then cultural courses. He said he had a great time there. And yeah. And um, this is how to contact. They have an um, official website. This QR code is for uh, this official website. If you uh, scan the QR code, you can access. Also, they have some social media like Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and so on. Yeah. And this was very short, but thank you for listening. Thank you, uh, Shia san for providing us the comprehensive details. The information you have provided will undoubtedly be beneficial to the prospective students. So thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. So next we have a presentation by Ms. Kushi Javeri, a graduate from Kyo University. So she'll share her personal experience of studying in Japan. So Kushi san please proceed uh, with your presentation. Thank you, uh, Sakshi San, for the introduction. I'll share my screen just a minute. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, Kushi yes. Um, okay, great. Okay, um, so very good evening to all the panelists and attendees. I'm Kushi Javeri, and today I'll be talking about uh, my study and work life in Japan. So first, I'll start off with my personal background. <laughs> so um, I was raised in Tokyo and I graduated from Keio University um, in the faculty of, from the Faculty of Fac uh, Environment and Information Studies. I have received, I had received a private scholarship from Keio University for three years of my undergraduate um, studies. And I've also, I'd also received a research grant award from the university for my research project, which I'll be talking about later. I created a platform, um, which is my research project called Edu Japan to help international students to come to Japan for higher studies. And I so far have work experience um, at the Tokyo Olympics 2020, which I believe all of you might know. Um, I have also worked for Mitsubishi Fuso US Japan Council, and I'm also working for the University of Tokyo in the office. Um, so now I'll give you a little insights into why you should choose Japan as your destination for higher studies. Um, so, firstly, Japan is the third largest economy in the world with a population of 126 billion. It is a member of the G7 and G20 summit with other developed countries. Japan ranks ninth in the Global Peace Index and has topped the Safe Cities Index for the third consecutive time. There are a range of international cuisines available in Japan. And for vegetarians who have attended the webinar, it is not available everywhere, but as a vegetarian myself, I can assure you that um, the universities do have options for vegetarians as well. Um, so it won't be that big of an issue. And regarding health policies, they have proved to be very beneficial to international students as 70% of the costs are paid by the government. So you only have to pay 30%, which is cheaper than many countries. 
<laughs> Next is the structure of Japanese universities. So Japanese universities are categorized into national that are founded by the Japanese government, public that are laid by local public entities, and private that are funded by private organizations. So 77% of the universities in Japan are private universities. And in terms of reputation, both are the same. Um, national, public, and private are pretty much the same, and they are equally valued. Um, for tuition fee structure, national and public come in the same category. Um, and private universities are a little more expensive, but there are more scholarships available. In Japan, undergraduate programs of four years, graduate for one or two, depending on the program you're applying for, but it's usually two years. And PhD is for three years, which is very less compared to other countries. The English programs in Japan are very, very well renowned because they're extremely affordable, even when compared to India or other South Asian countries, and definitely cheaper than countries like Canada, US, etc. So as I mentioned earlier, um, I will talk a little about the tuition fee and answer all your questions regarding this in the q and portal later. But um, Japan is one of the most affordable countries in the world for higher studies, as the tuition fee of international students and the domestic students is the same. In other countries, you, international students have to pay five times more than the domestic students. But in Japan, the tuition fee for international and domestic students is the same. So please keep this in mind. And as you can infer from the chart, the tuition fee of public universities in the US is eight times more expensive. Uh, and private universities in the US is six times more expensive when compared to Japan. And around 30 to 40% of international students have scholarships. Even if you don't get a scholarship, it's still very expensive. But if you are able to get a scholarship, the tuition fee decreases by a lot. Um, you can get 30% tuition reduction, 80% tuition reduction, 50% tuition reduction, depending on your academic profile. Um, you can apply for internal or external scholarship. So internal scholarships are provided by um, the university and private organizations, and external is by the government. So it can be mixed or just it. I have also listed a couple of basic documents that most of the universities ask for during application. So for more details, I would recommend you um, to check the application guidelines of the program, but these are generally the requirements. And please keep in mind that Japanese is not required in Japan. You do not need to have any knowledge of the language, um, but you can still apply to Japanese universities. So do not worry. Next is job prospects. Um, so the job prospects in Japan are countless as there are several benefits that come along once you work for a company here. Um, so before I get into the job opportunities, I would like to inform you that even once you graduate, your visa is valid for about six months and you can also extend the visa for about a year. So it's not like once you graduate, you need to find a job within one or two months. They give you a good amount of buffer time so that you can find a job. So uh, don't worry. And also recently, Japan has opened more um, job opportunities for international students. Now, graduates usually from uh, a computer background have a great scope in Japan, where this computer background or engineering background, they have more scope in Japan. But that does not mean students with, them, with a business background, economics background, don't get um, a job. They also do. Um, but companies like Google, Toyota, and Amazon look for more computer engineers. The average salary after graduation is around 2.5 million yen per year, which is 17 lakh rupees. And Japan has the lowest unemployment rate, which is 2.34%. And visa procurement is not at all difficult. Once you get accepted by the university, the process is a little faster. And the visa can be upgraded to working visa. So a student visa can be upgraded to working visa if you're able to find a job. And if you're not able to find a job, you get a shinkatsu visa, which is the job hunting visa. Um, so it's you do not you do not need to find a job as soon as you graduate. You still have some, you have a good amount of buffer time to find a job. 
Now, lastly, um, I'll just talk about my research project. So before you come to Japan, I would like to inform you that every um, student is allowed to work on a research project that they are interested in. It can be anything and everything. A Japanese university are very supportive. Um, and we, you can do a research project in your undergraduate studies, not even like master studies. So even if you choose to do undergraduate in Japan, you can do a research project of anything. Um, anything of your interest. It could be business, something in science, it could be computer, engineering, anything and everything. Um, so my my um specialization, my interest is higher education of Japan. So that's why I created a platform um so that international students can refer to it when if they're facing any difficulty when it comes to information about Japan's higher education. Um they can refer to this website. And I and the website is called Edu Japan, and I basically work as the admissions counselor for Japanese universities. And the website has all the information about uh, why you should choose Japan, university counseling, etc. So you could go ahead and uh, look into it if you're interested. But uh, what I'm trying to say by this, what I'm trying to convey by this um, slide is that a graduate, an undergraduate student, or a graduate student, masters or bachelors, you can work on any research project that is of your interest. Um, so that is what makes Japan um, special um, in, terms of a, in terms of being a study abroad destination. It encourages you to pursue whatever you're interested in. Um, next is uh, my student life in Japan. I'll quickly go through this slide um, so that you get a gist of what it, uh, what it feels to study in a Japanese university. So from my personal experience, I can certainly say that university has opened doors to several unexpected but worthwhile opportunities and experiences, as you can see from these pictures. Um, I've attended baseball events, um, participated in hackathons, clubs, workshops in different universities. Like I had a workshop in Hiroshima University. Um, so the various kind of experiences and every every experience has been unique and memorable in its own way. Um, students are supposed to join labs, which is called Kenkyukai in Japan, through which they gain hands-on experiences in their field of interest and work on their research under the guidance of a professor. So um, to sum up, I highly recommend students to consider studying in Japan as it is certainly a very fruitful experience without having to spend a lot on education. Um, so that brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope I've been able to give students and parents and insight into the study and work life in Japan. I look forward to meeting some of you very soon in Japan. So thank you so much for taking out time to listen to me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kushi, for sharing your insightful experience. So I'm sure uh, the audience got an overview of uh, student life in Japan. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So now uh, let's uh, move forward with the university presentation. So as I mentioned in my agenda slide, our first university is the University of Tokyo. So I'll give a brief introduction about the university. The University of Tokyo, in short, um, is named as Todai, is a public research university located in Tokyo, established in 1877. So it is considered to be the most uh, selective and prestigious university in Japan. So as of 2020, University of Tokyo's alumni, faculty members, and researchers include 17 prime ministers, 17 Nobel Prize laureates, and five astronauts and field medalists. So um, it is considered a world-class platform for researchers and education contributed to human knowledge in uh, partnership with other leading global universities. So uh, today we have uh, with us Professor D. Su from the Graduate School of Engineering to introduce about the university. Okay, thank you for the brief in, uh, introduction for our university. So let me introduce more our university and also School of Engineering. So let me start uh, today's introduction. So as the uh, just now the introduction, so our university was established in 80. 77, which is the first uh, university in Japan. And currently we have 10 undergraduate uh, un undergraduate schools and also 15 graduate schools. So also including the 23 research institute and centers, this is university-wide center. 
So you can see we are a comprehensive university, cover almost all the fields in nature science, social science, humanity, and other things. So since we call the university Tokyo, so our main campus was located in Tokyo. So we have the three main campus you can see. So Hongkou campus, Komaba campus, and Kashiwa campus. So two of them located in Tokyo and also Kashiwa campus is a new campus near the very near Tokyo city. So this is our uh, brief of, brief view of our university. Next, I want to share some number. So you can see in the left side is our skill by number of the students and also number of the faculty. And totally we have 28,000 uh, students. So among these kind of students, we have 4,700 international students. The ratio is about 16% the student, uh, foreign students. And to support these kind of students, we have more than 8,000 uh, staffs. So in the right side is our the, uh, annual bu budget uh, for our university. And let me focus more about the global students. You can see the number of the international students in this slide. For master student, we have 7,000 uh, uh, for the whole university, among them uh, 1,700 students, uh, foreign, student, uh, foreign students. And also we have 2,000 uh, students from foreign countries to have their doctor course in our university. So by average, we have 25% for the master students, uh, global students. And also for doctor students, 32% is the uh, foreign students. So currently in our university, Indian students, 73 uh, Indian students study in our university. And let me switch back to the engineering school. So our university is a very large and also comprehensive university. Today, I will focus more in my school, so the School of Engineering. The School of Engineering in the University of Tokyo was established in 1886, so which is the almost the first uh, patch of the School of Engineering in the world. So at the beginning, so we have we have several departments, and after more than 100 years development, so we cover almost all the field of the modern engineering. I will show you later. So we have also had a long history. To introduce the, our number before going to that, I want to share our education system in our university, which is quite unique. By comparing with the other university, maybe you will talk, uh, listen to the introduction from the other uh, two universities in the following presentation, but you will see that we are quite different. Uh, we have the four years undergraduate education, but the first two years, all the students will study together to accept the liberal art education. So they will not divide into any school in any department. They will study together. After two years, they will choose which department they want to join or which school they want to join. So, so basically for the professional education in each department, we only have two years. That means the junior and the senior students will study in the, each department, but the freshman and sophomore, they will study together. So to, to this meaning, so we don't accept so each department didn't accept the student from the very beginning. So I think some of the some of you may want to join the Japanese university from the undergraduate uh, stage, but for our university, it's a little different with the other university. We do offer the English course for the undergraduate education. I list up here is the program in English at Komaba. We call it PIC. So if you want to join the, our university as a bachelor students. So please take a look by search the PIC program. And then I think you will find the necessary information. This is totally in English program. And after two years study for the liberal art, and they will join the, our school. They will choose the School of Engineering. And you can see, so two years in our School of Engineering, and after that, two years for master and three years for doctor study. Since we uh, belong to the engineering, almost all the students will do the study in their laboratory. So I lived out here. So from their senior eight year, all the students will uh, join this class study and submit the, their thesis before graduation. That's our education system, which are uh, quite unique in Japan. And let's, let me show some number in the School of Engineering. So we have 2,000 undergraduate students, which cover junior and the senior, just as I explained. 
and we have the uh, 3,600 and the uh, graduate students. So among them, 2.3 2 thousand for master and 1.3 thousand for doctor students. We have very high ratio for the uh, foreign students in the graduate school. You can see more than half of the uh, student for doctor course are from foreign countries. And in fact, so we are the largest uh, school in the University of Tokyo. So close to 30% uh, of the students uh, our of how the university are come from our school. To support this kind of students, we have 800 uh, staffs, including the professor, social professor, and other uh, administrative staff to support this kind of students. And totally, we have the 18 departments which cover all the fields of the uh, modern engineering, from the civil city related engineering, chemi chemical, mechanical, electronical, and also bioengineering and other engineering fields. And you may you may notice that uh, we don't have the information science in, in this kind of uh, list because we have the independent school we call the School of Information Science and Technology. That's the only graduate school for the IT related department. They don't have the bachelor education. They, uh, they will accept the students from the engineering school and also in a uh, school of science to have this kind of IT related. Uh, education. And in our school, so we also have the two research institute and 11 research center, so we should cover the uh, quite many fields of the study. Let me explain more uh, for the admission for postgraduate. Uh, As I introduced our education system, so our uh, department only accept the junior and the senior students. So for, for you to enroll in our schools, the most uh, convenient may start from the postgraduate stage. And first, uh, we have the two, two approach to enter the uh, school. So first, we have the regular admission, so which is the normal uh, written examination. So together with the Japanese students, this is will be held in each uh, August. And then after joining this kind of regular admission, the written test, if you pass the, the uh, examination, so you can be enrolled. But for most of you, I think you will use the international admission. So international admission, uh, today I want to show the two main approach. The first is that the max the scholarship through the embassy recommendation. I think this is common for any Japanese uh, universities. So basically one year before the enrollment, you need to apply from the uh, embassy or the uh, uh, consulate from the each uh, country in India, such. So after that, if you get the opportunity to obtain the uh, scholarship from the embassy recommendation, you can contact uh, each university, including us, so to have to ask the, the enrollment for the details. So this is chance is not so many, so but we do offer another opportunities. So we offer one called the special graduate program for international students. And this is the quite uh, comprehensive uh, uh, program to cover almost all the field in engineering school. So you can see from the list. So I, I, I do think you can find your related major in this kind of list. This is called the special graduate uh, program. The specialty have the several meanings. First is that the, this program allow you to directly apply to the master and doctor program from abroad and apply this can through the one online application system we call the TSENS. You will find the uh, necessary uh, guidance for that. So you can submit uh, your documents and also necessary supported uh, materials. And after that, the faculty in each department will evaluate your performance based on the discount uh, your uh, doc documents you submitted to uh, uh, evaluate your academic uh, qualification, whether can, you can pass or this. So after that, some interview or some simple test will be carried out. After that, you will be accepted. That's the, the progress for this kind of special program uh, for the international students. I would like to remind all of you is that uh, if you want to be enrolled in the next year, so currently just the, the period to apply this kind of graduate program. So the deadline will be the, most of the program will be the end of the November. If you want to apply next year, 
please start, start now. That's for this kind of the international admission to support all the students to study in our university, in our school. So we offer uh, many kinds of the scholarship. First is the max scholarship. So either from the university recommendation and also embassy recommendation, this is for master and doctor. And uh, that's the, for the country level. So our university will offer the different uh, scholarship for the students. So first the uh, University of Tokyo Fellowship, this is the university level. And also we do offer this kind of, uh, we had a new project recently, World Leading Innovative Graduate Study Program. So this is to support the students in each field to have the scholarship. And uh, we have the Spring GX, this is the also new project recently. And in our school, so we also independently offer the scholarship for the doctor student uh, for SEUTRA, so this kind of scholarship. And finally, so for the university, so we will provide different kinds of on-campus job. As a result, I want to share this kind of number. About 75% of the doctor course students are uh, financially supported by each this kind of resource. So basically, when you study in our university, so you don't need to worry about this kind of financial support to your study. And all the education during the graduate school will be carried out in English, but to help you to enjoy more the uh, Japanese society or Japanese life. So we will offer the different kinds of the Japanese language class. So you can see from the very beginning and also uh, survival in Japanese and also very, very advanced the uh, Japanese uh, course. So before you start and during your stay and even after your stay, we do offer different kinds of the opportunity to let you start the Japanese language. And recently, I want to share some our new try is that uh, after pandemic, so this kind of face-to-face -face, uh, ed education, not stay on this kind of education method, we do use the online uh, methodology to explore the possibility to uh, have the collaborative with our international partners. So either in the joint courses, also the uh, joint online social event, cultural event. So this is the become our new experience during these uh, four years. And in the beginning, I think the University of Tokyo student introduced the GUC. So this is the uh, quite good uh, uh, practice for our our university and our school to offer another kind of the summer program. So we call the ESEP, Engineering Summer Education Program. So basically this is invite our partner university to our uh, school to join the uh, two months internship uh, study. So to let the student to have the more opportunity to experience our uh, school's uh, research environment and uh, accumulate the experience in Japan. So in the future, we hope these kind of students can come back to us to continue their degree study with us. So if you have interest in for this view, so please ask the, your uh, university for details, especially in the HIIT uh, uh, schools, we have this kind of relationship. And finally, I want to share the uh, career development program and also career uh, of the, our graduate students. So since the, all the education and study could be carried out in, Japan, uh, in English, but if you want to work in Japan for the future, after you graduate, graduate from our university, we have this kind of career uh, development program for international uh, students, not only to support the Japanese language study, but focus on the different level of the students. We try to uh, train the students during the job hunting or during the other uh, experience. So what kind of the, uh, necessary skill you need to train during in, during your study. After that, you have the enough the, uh, knowledge to do the job hunting in Japan. As a result, so this is, I want to share the results for this camp, the uh, previous students. Uh, you can see in the left side is the international master study. So what kind of career after graduation? So 21% will choose the industry in Japan to continue their work in Japan, and also 20% will continue the doctor course. That's for the master student after graduation. So in the right side is the doctor students. So join 11% students join the industry in Japan, and also 
uh, 35% join the academic field in Japan. So this is the uh, basic situation for the past uh, student graduated from our university. My last slide today is that uh, not only the normal way to join the industry or join the uh, academic field. So recently we focus more uh, in the inter, uh, entrepreneurship education because in the engineering field in recent days, it's more easy and more popular to let the younger student, younger generation to start their uh, business uh, in the very early young generation, very early range. So this kind of field, so we do have the different kinds of education to try to train our students to have enough the, uh, skill or enough the confidence to start their uh, start a company even before the graduation. So this has become more popular and popular. I think that's the very brief introduction for our school. So if you want to know more details, so this final slide will share the introduction for our school and also how, how about uh, for the international admission process, I think you can get the more information by click this kind of link and scan this kind of QR code. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much for providing us uh, with a comprehensive presentation and covering all the aspects of the University of Tokyo School of Engineering. Now, uh, let's move on to a QA and a session. So I'll assist you in selecting a few questions from the Q&A portal. Okay. Okay. So um, our, um, the first question is, um, are there any postdoctoral opportunities in chemistry? Uh, chemistry, uh, so since the chemistry has the two, two fields, right? One is the chemistry in science and one is the chemi chemistry in uh, chemical engineering. So in our department, we have the three, uh, in, sorry, in our school, we have the three department related to the chemistry. Let me show the slide. So quickly, and I think here, so we have the applied chemistry, chemi chemical system engineering and chemistry and biotechnology. Uh, we had the three related departments. So they offer this kind of uh, related education and study. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. So um, the next question is, are there any entrance exam to apply uh, for the School of Engineering in any of the department? Uh, if you want to use the international admission, so as I introduced just now, for that, so for most of the department didn't have the written examination. So you just apply to your uh, your submit your application online and also by submit your documents, necessary documents, and also carry out the interview. So the faculty here can judge your performance and give the admission. Some very small uh, departments, such as electronic engineering, they may have the written uh, examination. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And uh, the third question is, there is a very common question among students. So how can they get the contact information of the uh, University of Tokyo professors? Okay, as I, I think I already write down my answer in the uh, uh, Q&A. So for this kind of information, basically, so I think the student need to search this information by the university homepage or our school homepage. So at least first, uh, these two is necessary to check. So there's a faculty list and they will provide a, a detailed link for the, each professor. So by this kind of information, you can link to the professor personal or the laboratory uh, websites. I think in this kind of website, you can find the email address for the, each faculty. And also at the same time, you can check their related study and then check whether it's suitable for your interest or not. Yeah, thank you so much, professor. It's very important piece of information. So students, please, uh, uh, note down somewhere uh, the these points, and um, uh, uh, that our last question is: Are there any uh, internship opportunities um, at the School of Engineering for PhD students? So, uh, for PhD students, so we do offer this kind of exchange opportunity for our partner uh, university. Unfortunately, it's not open for any doctor students. But if you're from our partner university, such as several RITs, so please ask your university for details for exchange study. 
So basically by this system, you can stay, stay half a year or one year in our uh, department to, to collaborate with the host of professors. Yeah, okay. So thank you so much, Professor. We'll conclude the Q&A session here. Thank you again, uh, once again, okay. for addressing all the questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I see there are lots of questions related to the University of Tokyo. So I request you to please um, answer them in the Q&A box while okay. others... I will try to type. Yeah, thank you so much. Now, uh, let's proceed with the Yokohama National University. So I'll tell you, Yokohama National University is a public university located in Yokohama, Japan. It was founded in 1949 and is uh, one of the most prestigious universities in Japan. And YNU is also known for its strong academic program in engineering, science, economics, and business administration. So um, I'll um, call upon Professor Takayuki Suzuki to please explain about uh, Yokohama National University. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Takayuki Suzuki. Today I'm going to talk about uh, Yokohama National University and then also the uh, Department of Civil Engineering. I'll share my screen and then... Um, no. Maybe everybody can see my slide here. So today I talk about uh, my university. <clears throat> and then these are the contents of the uh, this presentation. First, I talk about the Yokohama National University itself, and then I belong to the uh, Department of Civil Engineering. So uh, today I mostly talk about this uh, uh, Civil Engineering Department uh, contents. And then finally, I will talk about uh, the mission of our department. So uh, first, I talk about location. So maybe everybody know about Japan, but uh, our university is located in the Kanto area. Uh, here is a, a zoom in map of the, around the Kanto area. And then here's Tokyo, Narita Airport is here, Haneda Airport is here. Our university is located uh, close to the Tokyo, Yokohama, south of the Tokyo here. And then <clears throat> access to the Yokohama city is very close to the Haneda or Narita airport, as I mentioned here. Um, out front of the Haneda airport, only like a 20 minutes by train. <clears throat> and then we have uh, five uh, principles in uh, Yokohama National University that be active, innovative, open, global, and in diverse. For the detail, you can check our uh, website. <laughs> So this is a photo of the Yokohama. So you can see the upper, upper area, this is the Yokohama Bay. And then the others, uh, more farther area, this is Tokyo Bay. And Tokyo Bay is there and the Yokohama Bay is here. We have this green area. This is our uh, campus. It is only one uh, uh, compacted in one campus. And then these are numbers of YNU. So we are established in 1874 and then undergrads are 75. 100 and the graduates are uh, 25,000. <clears> and I just mentioned that we only have, uh, have a compact in one campus. All the students are gathered in one location. <clears throat> So from here, I talk about the education of our undergrad and in a graduate school. So we have five colleges in the six graduate schools. This is the five colleges, education, economics, business in the engineering science and upper science. <clears throat> and for the graduate school, we have six graduate. One is education, social sciences, um, engineering science, environment and information sciences, and other innovation and innovative and practical studies. So from here, it's a bit difficult to understand what kind of, you know, a con uh, the laboratories existed in each graduate schools, but uh, I think it's you not know, time is limited. So please check our website, and then the, uh, you can see uh, which uh, your interest is uh, belong to these uh, in these six uh, graduate schools. So for all English programs, also we also existed that uh, is the master programs and also the uh, doctoral programs. And in the master programs, we had uh, uh, engineering, MP, and IGSI. These are mostly they belong to uh, uh, correlated to the civil engineering department, uh, civil engineering. And for the doctoral programs, you have economics and Japanese management, and the law policy, and then the IGSI. This is also linked to the civil engineering part. <clears throat> And then we have two research institute and the Institute of Advanced Science and then, and then more, one more thing is just uh, happened in these two research institutes existed in our university. 
And then these are the facility and the support system. We have central library, like this picture here. And then we also have a student center. <clears throat> and then cafeteria, shops, and then we have uh, four dormitories. So most of the international students are living in the, one of these uh, dormitories. <clears throat> And uh, once we come to Japan, that uh, the Japanese language is very, really, you know, uh, dif different compared to the English and other uh, languages. So we have, uh, we this kind of free English, uh, Japanese uh, language and the culture classes, and also we uh, doing the some tutor system. So once you come to Japan and uh, our university, you can have one student to support you about the, like a mailing list or a mailing or. Uh, like a uh, bank account, everything uh, he or she will uh, support you. And we also have a student support group which existed uh, one or five or ISL. Also they could support uh, you are living or studying in Japan. <clears throat> so these are the fee and the careers. And then the other also professors also explain about this fee, but uh, uh, tuition fee is very, different compared to the US or UK or uh, compared to Japan. Uh, Yokohama National University is a state, a state university. So it's much uh, uh, economic, uh, uh, economical than the, a private university in Japan. And then uh, here's the first year academic fees like this. So maybe you can think about it, how the, the big, this is a big difference compared to the uh, other countries in, compared to Japan. And then this is careers. Uh, um, here, international students also could work in Japan, but the one of the difficulties may be language. So some uh, companies can uh, hire uh, international students with uh, the uh, Japanese skill, but uh, uh, if you want to uh, work in Japan, I recommend you to uh, learn Japanese, and then at least you can, you know, talk with uh, Japanese, that is uh, a more, uh, e e slightly easy, or slightly uh, have an advantage to get a, a position in Japan. <clears throat> okay, from now, um, I'm going to move on to the second content that is Department of Civil Engineering, Graduate School of Upper Innovation. So our innovation, we have a master program and doctor programs. And in the master program, we have two uh, departments. One is architecture and the urban culture. And the other is a uh, department of infrastructure and urban society. I belong to this one and the civil engineering, they belong to uh, this uh, department here. In the doctor program, we hold only one uh, department, department of urban innovation. So it's uh, this department include not only the civil engineering, but also the architecture, urban culture and the urban society. <clears throat> and this is three reasons to study in civil engineering Japan. One is a uh, fulfilling ed education program and the many scholarships uh, for international students and then the worldwide connections with uh, uh, many universities. <clears throat> so this is a number of the civil engineering department in YNU. So we have five research fields. I will explain very briefly later uh, from next slide. In the undergrad, there are about 200, and the masters and the PhDs are uh, about 140. But uh, here, master and this PhD, more than 50% are international students, and then 30 faculty and staffs. <clears throat> in my new, uh, we have five research groups. One is bridge and structure engineering, it's in course engineering, and geotechnical, geo environment engineering, uh, transportation, and urban engineering. And the final one is concrete engineering. I show them briefly uh, one by one. <clears throat> so one is a bridge and structure engineering. So we have uh, uh, five, uh, four faculties members here. Uh, maybe it's time to limit it. So you can just check the small keywords here. So they are mostly doing the structure engineering and also the wing engineering and the structure dynamics. So these are the keywords of the this lab tree. So this is some example of the uh, research topics. And uh, you can see that uh, they are doing lots of simulations matters. And then also they have a, a wind tunnel. So they are doing the experiment using a wind tunnel. And then also they could also use some uh, uh, field data set. So advantage studying in structural engineering in mind is that the communication to the worldwide bridge projects and then the you know, active collaboration with the government and industries. So if you have any interest about the wind and the industrial structures, please let us know. And second one is Australian and the course engineering. I'm I'm the professor of this lab, and then we have three faculty members in this laboratory. 
So we have uh, this is a key words of my uh, my love. This is a uh, uh, one is was key course engineering. This is a uh, uh, we are mostly doing all uh, coastal matters, and then coastal processes, and then ocean color remote sensing, and the coastal hazard. These are the, our keywords. So we are looking about the two major. Uh, Mm, objectives. One is uh, protecting the land and people from natural disasters. So one of the examples is a coastal erosion matter or a tsunami and storm storage. This is uh, one of the uh, uh, major topic. The other is that the environmental restoration and the coast and stranger lakes. So this is kind of more looking about the more physical matter, but this is kind of more like water quality matters. And then we are also doing that uh, field experiment or uh, laboratory, not those field pictures not shown here, but the uh, um, in experiments and then also the uh, using satellite image analysis. Third one is the geotech and then geo environmental engineering. So here is the three faculty members here. The keywords are geomechanics, uh, geoengineering, geo environmental engineering, and also they're also doing the tunnel engineering. <clears throat> So these are some uh, examples of the, their uh, research topics. Uh, Geomechanics and then geo uh, disaster, uh, for example, like earthquake, uh, rain, for example. And then also they are also doing a geo environment. So how uh, to reduce the CO2 from the uh, construction site. Those are one of the example of the, this uh, geo environment. And also the maintenance, uh, there are lots of railway existing in the world of the world. So how to maintain the, this kind of railway. This is also one of the topic of the geotech lab. So group four, this is transportation and urban engineering. So this is uh, urban regional planning or disaster risk reduction, housing, and then traffics, uh, ITS. These are the uh, to uh, topics of the, this laboratory. And the three uh, faculties are existed in this laboratory. So they are uh, concerning about the safety, smoothness of the road traffics. So lots of uh, traffic jams are uh, very uh, uh, issue in the overall water walls. So how to reduce those uh, traffics? That is other one of the uh, main keywords of this laboratory. And other transportation concerning habit uh, habitation and the environment and in urban region planning in Japan and then also developing countries. So they are doing not only the uh, inside Japan, but the uh, their topics also moved to the, mostly in the Asian country, but they also have uh, doing some experiment or like an interview survey in the other countries. And the last one is concrete engineering. We have three professors uh, uh, look, uh, belong to this uh, uh, concrete lab. So keywords are like uh, uh, future mode, fatigue, and concrete lab, and then uh, uh, corrosion, uh, much iron transport. <coughs> transport. These are the keywords of their laboratory. So this is examples of the research fields, so structure mechanics, and then the materials. So concrete, they are using new material to make the uh, CO2 zero uh, concrete, for example, and then durability and the management. There are so many concrete uh, structures existed all over the world. How to maintain is that uh, this is also the one of the uh, important keyword in their lab. And then also the extreme condition like a, a earthquake or fire, those are the extreme conditions. Uh, they also concerning about the how uh, about the situation of those uh, extremes. <clears throat> So uh, next is that I talk about the all English programs. So this is the number of the uh, international students in Wine. You can see that they gradually increased after the 2000. So nowadays, uh, about more than 25 students are coming in our uh, department every year. So in our English program is a master for two years and the PhD for three years. Uh, there are several credits are needed, but uh, most of the older students graduate within a two or three years. <clears throat> and then these are the max scholarships uh, under the, uh, this special program. We have uh, two uh, programs running now. So one is civil and department. So we have five and two uh, DPhD, uh, doctor course and master course from uh, this program. And then we have the other one is uh, the three doctor and one uh, master course uh, uh, 
uh, coming to uh, our laboratory. So for uh, this year, uh, deadline is December 18, and the details are shown in our website. So please check it. And if you have any interest, please let us know. And then if you have a more specific interest, please uh, contact to the your expected supervisor and then talk with them. And the other is a JICA uh, scholarships. So JICA, we had also a collaboration with JICA and JICA uh, have a lot of uh, scholarships like a JDS, our initiative, SDGs. So these are uh, some uh, students also come to our university uh, under these kind of scholarships. So for these, uh, please contact the JICA and then they have more information about these uh, uh, programs. And then, there's some you can you can come to our university uh, under these uh, scholarships, and then one of the the other thing is that IMP this is infrastructure management program and this is uh, funded by the World Bank, but this is uh the slightly different compared to the previous two uh scholarship. These are needed two year uh uh work uh, experience is needed, but this is all, uh, also, this is only the master program for two years. And then uh, uh, you can come to here and then get a, a master's and back to the uh, your uh, home countries. <laughs> and then here, uh, so they are showed activities and classes in uh, one year students. We have, uh, uh, we owned the Japanese language classes individually uh, in our department. And then the, we reserve the some Japanese and not only the uh, Japanese skill, but also the teaching some uh, culture and then the uh, communications with the other faculties and other Japanese students. We also are uh, uh, busy to the technical tech tech visit like this. And then here, not only our university, but also lots of Japanese uh, uh, universities also collaborate with uh, overseas and in exchanges. And then also we have several, several double, double, double degree programs. And then also we uh, joined to the uh, collaborative education program at SIDNET. So finally, I'll show you about the admissions. So the time is uh, almost end. So uh, please ask, uh, move to the uh, this website, Old English uh, Graduate Program in Civil Engineering. And please check this QR code and see the detail. And then uh, as I mentioned, the MEP scholarship deadline is uh, December 18, but the website is not renewed yet, but uh, maybe next, uh, Next week, the uh, the website is renewed, and then you can check the detail about it. But now, now you can see that the last year's version, but the, the content is almost the same. So please check it, and then uh, if you have interest, please let us know. <clears throat> uh, the page is here. You can see the All Wings program, and you can check the detail. So this is the admission for the one year in the civil engineering department. Uh, Max scholarships the deadline is at uh, December, and after that, uh, as uh, on December this is the deadline, and after that, uh, we the schooling is finished, and then apply to the next, and then the, uh, if you uh, uh, accept it, you can come to uh, in Japan in the next year, uh, end of September. And IMP is slightly different. The application is at the middle of the uh, March, and the screening started from the April. But the uh, starting point of the uh, education is the same. And next year, October. <clears throat> so, if you have any uh, questions or comments, please let us know. This is the contact information: fso uh, hyphen civil at yneshjp. Uh, and then also you can. Check the more uh, information about the university. You can uh, you can see uh, this uh, when you go for or our institute uh, when you uh, you uh, you can check it. Thank you very much for listening. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Professor, for such a wonderful presentation. I'm sure uh, students are highly motivated to join the university. Myanmar is a highly regarded university with a strong academic reputation and a vibrant international academy. So I request all our attendees today, if you're looking uh, for a study in Japan, then Bayanu is definitely be a good option for you. Now, uh, let's proceed with the Q&A session. So um, I request uh, Professor Takayuki to please answer some questions um, mentioned in the Q&A box. Mm. So, so should I pick a question for you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, the question is, does um, any experience required to apply for a graduate program at the YNU? Um, actually, graduate skills is kind of a more specific in the research field. 
So the, uh, if you have any research experience or research uh, interest, please contact to the sub uh, expected supervisor and then discuss with them. That is maybe the better. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question is, are there any um, uh, GPA considered to apply for uh, programs at the YNU? Yes, the uh, next scholarship is the government scholarship. They, so they have some uh, uh, lowest level of the uh, GPA. And after that, uh, maybe it, it's kind of competition is occurred because lots of students apply to this program. So we also need to consider about the GPA, but not only GPA, but also the research uh, in the uh, research project and then the kind of uh, how uh, they are thinking about the research itself. So not only the uh, GPA, but also that we checked that not of the, also the English skills also needed, right? We need, because we need to discuss with them in English. Uh, so that is all the things you need to consider. So not only the GPA, but the GPA is also the important factor. Okay, all right. So is Japanese also needed to apply for scholarships and for applying to YNU? No. We don't need it. So the you know because we had only this person that existed, so only to have English a Japanese skill. But if you want to work in Japan, for example, it will have better to have a Japanese skill. But for our uh, program, no need. And then you can learn it from how much come to Japan or why do you you can learn it Japanese like a konnichiwa, why was I must <laughs> maybe you can learn it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the next question is, um, are there any fellowships for uh, PhD students? What do you mean fellowship? Uh, any fellowships are there uh, at your university for uh, PhD students? Uh, I mean, the uh, mm, fellowship, your scholarship, you mean? Yes. Ah. Uh, Actually, uh, maybe we don't have. So if you want to get some uh, scholarship, better to apply to the government scholarship or like uh, uh, other scholarships in your countries or JICA, maybe that is the best. Ah, okay, all right. So uh, the last question is, uh, does a student have to become a research student prior to apply admission to the Graduate School of Engineering um, Science or School of Science? Sorry, one more time, please. Um, do a student have to, you know, uh, uh, become a research student prior to uh, at the admission at the Graduate School? No, no, you don't need it. So it's, it depends on the student, it depends on the expected supervisor, but uh, some students come before like a half a year and they become uh, like uh, uh, like a students bef before, but the most of the students are coming to the October and then they just started as a student in my name. Ah, okay. All so right. no need. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, one more question, please. Uh, are there any uh, marine time and naval architecture courses at YNU? Marine what? Marine marine time and naval architectural courses. Um, it's related to marine engineering or yeah, marine uh, engineering also existed in our university, but not in the civil engineering department. So it's a different in a different department. Oh, okay. So you can check the website and then you can access to the uh, appropriate laboratory and then you can ask to the professors. That is better. So not okay. in the civil engineering. Different, okay, uh, they, they, yeah, they, they have, they but in the engineering department, it's, so it's different, different department. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor, for addressing the question. And I noticed there are a few more questions to be answered. So please uh, try to answer them while uh, move on to the next presentation. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So uh, next on the agenda slide, we have a Kyushu University. So Kyushu University is also known as Hyudai, is one of the seven former imperial university created in the Meiji period. So it is one of the most prestigious university in Japan and is known for its strong academic programs in engineering, science, medicine, and humanities. So uh, I would like to invite Professor Andrew Spring to please give an overview of the admission process at the Kyushu University. Hey, good evening. Uh, let me share this slide. Can you see those okay? No problem? Yeah, I can see your slide. 
Professor. So uh, I'm Andrew Spring from the uh, Interdisciplinary Graduate School of Engineering Sciences, at IGSES at uh, Kyushu University. Let me just. So Kyushu University is located in uh, Fukuoka City, which has often been considered uh, the gateway to Asian countries. It's relatively close to South Korea. It was founded in the 1911, and uh, over the last uh, decade, I guess, uh, there's been a massive amount of relocation um, to the new Ito campus uh, from 2018. So this is a very huge campus. You can see the picture here on the screen. So if you look at the little map there in the, in the, in the corner, you can see uh, where is uh, Fukuoka City uh, compared to the location of other major Japanese cities. So it's down there in, in the south uh, on the island of, of Kyushu. So here are some uh, pictures from uh, Fukuoka City. Um, one of the most famous landmarks is the uh, Fukuoka Tower. Perhaps you can see that that one there, that building, um, tall building. Uh, the rather squat looking building is a, is a baseball stadium, which is also uh, quite a famous landmark. So Fukuoka City is um, not as well known, perhaps, as many other Japanese cities, uh, for sure. But uh, I can tell you it's a great place to live, actually. And um, in 2017, in fact, uh, it was highly ranked um, as the first most desirable cities among all the cities in Japan. Uh, and the reason is, you can see, is the uh, city potential growth, uh, population increase and ratio of young people. A uh, number of international students, and uh, importantly for you, perhaps it has a very low living cost compared to other major Japanese uh, uh, cities. So here you can see some uh, key metrics about the university. Um, the international student ratio is about thirteen uh, percent, one out of every eight students from overseas, in fact. Uh, number of faculty is at about 2,143. So there's a ratio of about nine to one student to faculty there. Um, so as you can see at the top, at the, at the bottom uh, left there, uh, many, many uh, countries are represented at Kyushu University, in fact. Um, it was ranked uh, six by THE system in 2023 in Japan universities. And the QS University ranking at the moment is uh, 135. So Kyushu University has an aspiration to, to develop this um, a global reputation and to enhance its position in the QS system. So it has this so-called Vision 2030, uh, focusing on eight visions um, to realize this uh, potential of the university, uh, transforming governance, digital transformation, education, research, co-creation with society, international collaboration, medicine, finance. So objective one there is to become a platform uh, for knowledge that drives world-class research and education. Now, objective two is to become the core of an innovation ecosystem that forges new social and economic systems. So hopefully we can propel ourselves further up the QS ranking and, and increase our global reputation uh, by achieving these goals. So this is a list of the undergraduate schools. There are 12 undergraduate schools at Kyushu University. And as you can see by that list, they they cover all the major disciplines and fields uh, from, from humanities and all the different sciences, for example. Uh, there are 18 graduate schools at Kyushu University. And I've highlighted the one in yellow, which is the graduate school I belong to, uh, IGSES. So this, this slide here shows a, a map of the Fukuoka City downtown area. Um, we have quite a, a few campuses. I, as I said before, the main uh, campus is the Ito campus, located in the countryside a little bit. And you can see the location of um, IGSES, which is in the so-called Chikushi campus. Um, actually, this campus is rather conveniently located quite close to the international airport. And also about um, 10 to 20 minutes train journey into the city center. There are also another, a few other campuses like Hospital Campus and Ohashi Campus, for example. 
So Chikushi campus, uh, the, the home of IGSES, is uh, located in a lush green environment south of the city center. So Exis um, straddles two cities, basically, Kasuga City and Anojo City, and is adjacent to the southern part of Fukuoka City, uh, located quite conveniently in front of a major uh, JR station, JR Anojo station. So you can take a train 10 minutes and you're in the city center. Uh, the area is quite a um, comfortable place to live, quite relatively quiet residential area. So it's a good environment for, for study, I think. So the ratio of international students, um, 673 at Chikushi campus, about 57.3% doctoral course students and 23.5% master course students. So I will now show you a, a short video. Um, don't worry about the audio. It's just a just a music soundtrack anyway. So here you can see various images from around the Fukuoka city and also our campus. All of these professors that you see here are actually uh, based on our campus. Oh, I hope you liked that short video anyway. So here are some uh, images from our uh, campus. As you can see, it's uh, quite heavily vegetated. And these are some shots of the campus in the various different seasons. Uh, you might be surprised to see that we even have some heavy snow on occasion in Fukuoka City. So let's take a look at the structure of Exis. Uh, we can categorize the various fields into three. Uh, one, material science. So this major is focused on science and engineering of materials and devices, uh, chemistry and materials science. The second category of uh, majors is uh, energy science. So here we have a focus on device, uh, science and engineering, plasma and quantum science and engineering. And finally, uh, point three, environmental system science with a focus on mechanical and systems engineering, other systems science and technology. In addition to this, there's also two um, adjunct institutes, Institute of Materials Chemistry and Engineering, IMCE, and also the Research Institute for Applied Mechanics, uh, REM. So let's take a look at the material science major. This is, this is actually uh, close to my field. Um, this is physical science and engineering materials and devices. So here we focus on environmentally symbiotic materials through study and practice of advanced materials design, evaluation and processing. 
with materials engineering at, at its core. Uh, chemistry and materials science is absolutely my field. So if you want to join my group, please find me in, in this category. So here we focus on um, development of advanced environmentally symbiotic technologies who can act as uh, fields that border on other fields with chemistry and materials science as the core academic uh, field there. Uh, next one is a plasma and quantum science and engineering. And this, this particular field focuses on advanced uh, high energy fundamentals and applications from the development of new energy to the development of environmentally symbiotic materials using plasma science and the quantum science. Now, the next uh, category is device science and engineering. Um, here, here this, this category is focusing on uh, engineering related to design and fabrication of semiconductor devices, the characterization of those devices and system development. Now, the next category is uh, environmental system science, so mechanical and system engineering. And this particular field uh, focuses on construction of sustainable social systems based on mechanical engineering and system science and engineering. And finally, uh, earth system science and technology. This particular field uh, focuses on solving global environmental problems by acquiring cutting edge technology in the field that integrates and unifies global environmental science and atmospheric and oceanic engineering. So now let me tell you about a few of the uh, programs that we have on this campus related to international uh, students. So we have the so-called Intellectual Exchange and Innovation Program, IEI program. So this uh, program aims to foster science and engineering leaders who will serve as bridges between Japan and overseas um, universities and contribute to the realization of a sustainable society by balancing economic development and environmental conservation in the home countries of the students. So as you would expect, the, me the medium of instruction is uh, conducted in English only. So this is a research-based doctoral program in materials, energy, and environmental sciences, basically the categories I just discussed. So there is a mixed scholarship available for this program of 145,000 Japanese yen per month and tuition fee exemption for three years. Um, generally speaking, each year there's about six seats available for the IEI program. Um, so the scheme to acquire knowledge of Japanese culture is also available. Uh, lectures on society, industry through a series of uh, key speakers and also internships is possible. So let me uh, talk about that in a little bit more detail. Um, so as I say, we have six, generally six funded um, seats, three-year doctoral course programs. Um, originally, the focus was on uh, Middle East and Africa, but recently uh, this has been expanded to include other, other countries. So I, I do believe that you are eligible to apply for this one, students from India. Um, so the degrees awarded depend on which major you belong to, obviously. So Doctor of Engineering, Doctor of Science, or Doctor of Philosophy. Um, so the deadline, uh, application deadline, October 31st, uh, five o'clock Japan time. Uh, so you, you still have time to apply for this one. Um, please have a look at the Finder Supervisor and how to apply uh, QR codes there. So let me introduce another, another um, global program that is running on this campus, the so-called uh, Campus Asia Plus program. So this is a collaborative graduate education program for the development of global human resources in energy and environmental science and technology. So this is um, a double degree program and it's only a master course program. It's not a doctor course program. So there's about 10 students from each university per year. Uh, recently, um, another university has been added to this uh, grouping, uh, UTM Malaysia. So it, it involves um, many educational activities, such as a spring seminar, summer school, international symposiums, and fulfills the so-called COIL education uh, objectives. So the universities involved here, you can see, you can see on the on the right hand side there, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, Busan National University, and UTM Malaysia. So about 185 uh, number of graduates with double degrees um, every year awarded um, through this program. 
2,750 students and the 1,541 faculty members, if you include the full um, university list there. So there are other double degree programs uh, in existence, uh, especially with the Pusan National University since 2019, and that's a doctoral program. Uh, National Taiwan University of Science and Technology since 2020. This one is a master course program and, of, and also National Taiwan Normal University starting in 2023, which is also a master course program. So this is a very important uh, slide, I, I would say, to find out more information. So you can have a look at the uh, school website, the movie I showed you, um, and also information about uh, funded PhD programs like the IEI course uh, there. Uh, find a prospective supervisor is the link at the bottom. So that's uh, finished for my presentation. Uh, thanks, thanks for listening. Um, if you have any questions, I hope I can answer them. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor, for a delightful presentation. So I'm sure students have got a lot of information from your presentation. Now, uh, let us proceed with the Q&A session. So first, I would like to uh, know that um, what uh, is the approximate living cost uh, at Kyushu University or living in Q uh, Fukuoka City? Well, it's a good question. I don't really have a, a data on that, but um, definitely it's much cheaper to live in Fukuoka City than other major Japanese cities, such as Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto. Um, I'm not sure about the precise data, but uh, definitely much cheaper, I would say. Oh, okay, thank you so much. So uh, this um, Kyushu University have exchange programs also? Yes, there are numerous exchange programs depending on the department. I mean, the, the programs that I've introduced, the double degree programs, um, they're, they're, they're exchange programs in themselves. Okay, all right. So um, are there any scholarships available for exchange students or exchange programs? Uh, what, what kind of exchange programs? I mean, uh, it's quite difficult to answer. Um, there might be an exchange component as part of one of these special programs uh, that, that will be included within it. Um, there may be some exchange initiated by your own supervisor, research supervisor. So it's 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 hard to pin down actually, but um, case by case, I would say, depending on the program, the supervisor and the uh, department. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. So uh, you're from Department of Engineering. So are there uh, any other courses like data science, artificial intelligence, data analytics uh, offered at the Kyushu University? Well, I, I mainly focused on the Interdisciplinary Graduate School of Engineering Science. So I, I mainly know about that, what's going on on that campus. Um, Ito campus has its own um, huge number of programs and uh, please, please check the website if, if, you, if you're interested in the non-IGSES uh, information. All right, thank you so much, Professor. Uh, so there uh, is a question from a student. So uh, do you support international students who wish to uh, work in Japan? Like Kyushu University, uh, does Kyushu University support international students? Yeah, sure. We, they always try to try to uh, help them get into employment. And um, I've known num numerous um, international students who after graduation, they've gone on to get jobs. Um, as previous speakers said, though, I mean, to get a job in Japanese industry, you really have to have good Japanese language ability. That's important. But uh, if you want to go on to become a postdoc, for example, in universities and research institutes, it's not really required to have good Japanese language ability. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So to applying um, at your uh, department, so are there any entrance exam required? Not really. It's not no written entrance exams, I do believe, for the international students. It's, there may be an oral exam where uh, you have to give a presentation and uh, you are judged by various faculty members. And they, that will be the most of it, I think. There's no, no, no serious written examination like the domestic students undergo. 
Okay. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much for your presentation and for answering uh, all of the questions. So um, this leads to the end of the webinar. I would like to thank all of the presenters for sharing their insight with us. And for all our attendees, thank you so much for making time to sit through all of the presentation. It was so engaging, so educative and fulfilling because, because of your presence. So uh, just to inform you that in our upcoming webinar, we'll be uh, having three uh, national, private and pub, uh, public, public universities going to participate in our next session. So please um, stay tuned and register yourself to participate in uh, our next webinar on 21st October, Saturday. Uh, I'll also share the QR code to register uh, for the webinar. So just a second. So if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email. And uh, yeah, I'm just sharing my screen for registration. I hope uh, you can see my screen. So you can just uh, register for the next webinar for uh, from this QR code. So best of luck for your future. Have an amazing day. Uh, so work hard to, ca uh, for, to catch your dream. Study hard. And thank you so much. We'll see you in the next session.